Hello, Strange Loop. Welcome to DomStep, browser dance party. How many of you know what Meet Spaces is? Show of hands. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say hi to Meet Spaces. Everybody, wave. Hi, Meet Spaces. All right. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's a like GIF-based chat site, which is super cool. Um, so, who am I? My name is Jameson Dance. I'm 27 years old. I've heard jokes about my last name for 27 years. And today I realized that the title of my talk has the word dance in it. And now all those jokes have become reality. Um, I'm Jurgison on Twitter and GitHub. Um, I do JavaScript Jabber, a podcast about C Sharp. Just kidding. It's about JavaScript. You guys probably guessed that. Who am I? 24601. Oh, right? I always think of that when I hear the phrase, who am I? I'm not Jean Valjean. Um, but I am a former international rock superstar. And I will show you proof. This is my high school band, the Goodsman Brothers. Um, there are probably more people in the band than were watching us right then. Um, but it's not the, the number of people that watch you. It's the purity of your rock or something like that. I don't know. Um, to prove. This is our, our high school band. We're pretty terrible. Um, the reason I play that is to establish credibility. So a key when speaking <laughs> is to show the audience that you know what you're talking about. I'm talking about music. Clearly, um, I was a young Mozart. And uh, so I, therefore, you should listen to what I say about music. Um, so we're going to be talking about the Web Audio API. I'm not an audio engineer. Um, I'm not a fantastically talented musician. I'm just a software developer that decided to tinker with it. And I say that to give you hope, because if you are an audio engineer, or good at music, or smarter than I am, which is probably true, then you can do way more amazing things than I'm doing. Um, so it's to, to show you the possibility. So today we're going to start an EDM band. EDM is what you say instead of dubstep if you're really pretentious, um, but it's the same thing. <laughs> We're going to start a dubstep band with your help. And we're going to do that with the Web Audio API. So by a show of hands, how many people have played with the Web Audio API? Well, there's a fair amount of people. Cool. Um, so for those of you that don't know, it's an API in the browser. It's in Chrome, Firefox, Safari. Opera is um, maybe working on it. I don't know. And Internet Explorer, whatever. Um, you create this audio context. That's what this fancy diagram is showing. You create this audio context object on the page, and then you create this graph of nodes that create and manipulate sound waves, and you hook them together. Um, and then you pipe the result of that to the speakers, and that's how you can play with and generate music in the browser. It's similar to an analog synth. So this is the Wood Audio API. Um, this is a Moog synthesizer. And it has some of the same concepts as the Web Audio API. So there's the whole, the, the audio context here is, is the synth itself, the whole thing there. There are, um, you can see all these chords connecting stuff together. You could think of these as different nodes in the, in the API. Some of them produce sound, some of them manipulate sound, and then you pipe it all out to the speakers. So like the keyboard is, would be a node that produces sound. I don't know what any of these other things do actually, but. Um, <laughs> I assume they do sound-related things. <laughs> OK. Uh, how many people have laptops? I need you to open up your laptops. You all probably have them open anyways, but I'm giving you permission to open up your laptops. So um, there are some closure people here. There are some people playing with Overtone. And Overtone is incredible. Uh, it's a tool for generating music with closure. You can do live coding with it in a REPL. And it's um, the abstractions it provides for creating music are a lot better than the Web Audio API. So in a world where Overtone exists, why do you care about the Web Audio API if it's so low level? You care because you can do stuff like this. Everybody open up a browser tab. Does everyone know how to um, type multiple lines of code without submitting them in the browser console? No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you, ha you hold down Shift Enter to put in a new line without making the browser evaluate it. Um, so I need the people. Let's see. 
on the right side of the room to type in these lines. I need the people in the middle, so kind of the middle of these two rows to type in these lines. And don't hit enter, don't like start them yet. And then I need the people on the left, I guess it'd be your right, your right to type in these lines. And I'll give you a minute. I know you all want to be on your laptops anyways, so this is just an excuse to do that. Um, this is the Strange Loop Orchestra, by the way. So you are all now members of the Strange Loop Orchestra. Can you see it? Is that big enough? Is it hard to see? I still hear typing, so I'll stall for a little bit. Um, does anyone know any jokes? <laughs> I do not. I'm bad at stalling. Okay, are people done typing? No, okay. I'll, I'll wait a little longer. Um, by the way, this slide presentation is in HTML5, um, but it wasn't built with Grunt, it was built with Gulp. So all, all those problems that he talked about are just kidding, there's still problems. <laughs> um, oh, and turn up your volume. I hear some volume noises. So yeah, that's important. All right. It's like little applause. That's so cute. Ready? OK, I'm going to conduct you guys. So when I raise my hands like this, that means hit Enter to evaluate the code. The middle, evaluate the code. OK, ready? There were some typos in there. I heard, <laughs> I heard some stray notes. That just means it's art. Um, you don't understand my art if my music is bad. OK, give yourselves another round of applause. That's the Strange Loop Orchestra. <laughs> so what we did there was uh, generated some sound with the Web Audio API. We'll talk a little bit about how we did that and explain how to do it um, and, and give some code examples that are easier to understand than what I typed in there. So this is an example. We're just going to create a simple tone. It's a little quiet. Yep, that's our tone. And this is the code that does it. So we're creating a new audio context here. You usually only have one of these on the page at, at, at a time, and then you do all of your work with the same context. We're creating an oscillator node, which is a node that generates a wave um, and then we're setting its frequency to 300. That controls the pitch of the tone that it plays. And then here we're connecting the node to the destination of the context, which is the speakers. So when we, when we showed that diagram earlier, there was a node connected to another node. That's what we're doing here. And then we call start on the node, which starts it playing. Um, so for a little bit more explanation, we need to talk about how sound works. So what you perceive as sound um, comes to your ears as variations in, in pressure. So it's a wave of pressure that hits your eardrums, that triggers a nerve, that sends a signal to your brain. Um, so this is kind of an example of the, the areas of high pressure, where there are a lot of molecules in the air, and then low pressure. And that corresponds to this wave here, where the amplitude, the kind of height of the signal, corresponds to high pressure. Um, where there are low, low amount of molecules, that's the, the low part of the wave, I guess. Um, so that's how, that's how sound works. Um, there are these waves, they hit your ear, you hear sound. And we can show what the sound wave that we're generating looks like, um, like this. So that's our sound wave being drawn on a canvas while it plays. Um, this slider controls the frequency. And you can see when I change the frequency, the, that's a little loud. The distance between these peaks in the wave get um, longer the lower the frequency goes. That makes the note sound lower. And then when I change the frequency to be higher, pitch goes up, right? So that's how you control pitch. It's just the, the distance between the, the, the peaks or the frequency of the sound wave. Um, we'll talk a little bit about digital audio just to understand how computers process it most of the time. So um, 
that was a sine wave. It's easy to compute a sine wave. Um, lots of sound is made up of a lot more complex waves, and it's hard to just store a function that computes that wave. So computers cheat, and they just digitize it. So they just sample the height of the, the wave at a bunch of different intervals, and then turn that into an array of, of numbers. So most of the time when computers process audio, they're working with these arrays of numbers. This is called linear PCM data. It's kind of the lowest level ROS representation of digital audio. Um, that'll come up a little bit later. All right, so I've made a theremin. Does anyone not know what a theremin is? It's OK, I see a couple of hands, so I'll explain it. It's an instrument um, that you control. It shows up a lot in sci-fi movies where it has these wands and it detects like the electromagnetic signals from your hands or something like that. And you just move your hands up and down and make these weird wobbly noises. So like the classic 60s sci-fi movie sound, like laser gun, woo, 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 woo. That's usually a theremin. Um, this is the web audio theremin. So we have uh, our theremin here. And then here it's going to graph the um, sound that we're making. So hang on. I practiced playing a, a song, and I want to see if you guys can recognize it. Oh. I need to practice a little more. <laughs> so there are a couple things to notice here. One is that the shape of the wave is different than the last wave we looked at. This is called a sawtooth wave. So where the sine wave was very smooth and flowing, this um, rises and then drops off, and then rises and drops off like that. That, affects, that doesn't affect the pitch of the sound, like which note it's playing. It affects the tone. Um, so when we move up and down like that. That affects the, the frequency. You can see they get closer together. Um, I want to see if you guys can guess what it does when I move from left to right. Does anyone have an idea? I see a hand. Um, I don't know what those words mean. <laughs> said makes the envelope or cut off shorter. Um, I'm going to explain it by filtering. So the Web Audio API has oscillator nodes. We already looked at those. It also has what's called a biquad filter, which allows you to change the shape of the wave um, by emphasizing certain frequencies or, or parts of the wave. So you can see as we move from left to right, right here, it's, it's kind of smoother. Um, and then it gets a little more jagged the further right we go. So if I could keep my mouse perfectly flat, um, you wouldn't hear a change in, in the pitch. You would just hear that change in tone. And that's reflected in the change in the shape. See how these lines are kind of jaggedy? Um, that's a scientific term, jaggedy. So we'll show the code to do this. So this is the same as before. New audio context. You make an oscillator. This time, we set its type to be a sawtooth wave. By default, it's a, it's a sine wave. Here's where we make our filter. And then instead of connecting the signal to the destination, we're connecting the signal to the filter. Um, and then we connect the filter to the destination. So we're piping the wave through the filter. And then uh, all the icky DOM code I left out, because you guys know how to do that. But we're basically hooking up the frequency value to the X position of the mouse and the um, signal, the, the sawtooth wave value, sorry, the filter value to the position of the mouse on the X axis, and then the um, signal value to the position of the mouse on the Y axis. So that's how we do that. Um, another important part for making music is loading buffers. This did not work, so I have to refresh the page. Um, Sorry, it also didn't ask for. All right, um, so you can load uh, sound into a buffer, which is how you would kind of use music from, from a server. So use music files instead of just generating the waves yourself, which is helpful. Um, so this is an example of how to do that. This is the same song, the Goodsman Brothers' greatest hit as before. <laughs> Um, and then it's graphing the signal 
right here in a SVG thing. So we'll show how we did that. There's, um, <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I forgot about this. Um, that's why. <laughs> this is how I write code normally. So I don't know what that says that you're, you're laughing. Um, so there's a little module I made to, to load buffers. Basically, you make an XHR request. And then, actually, I'll show that code. I'm a rebel. I'll show some live code. Can you see this? OK. So it takes in an audio context um, and returns a callback, or sorry, a function that takes in a path and a callback. And then it just grabs the file at the path Make sure the response type is array buffer. That's important for the web audio API to be able to decode it. And then you call this function on the audio context called decode audio data. You just pass it your data. It's a, an array buffer, which means it's just like the array of bytes. And it, um, the web audio API has things built in to understand the different music file formats. So AUG, MP3, WAV, WAV, however you pronounce that. It'll just take it and turn it into this audio buffer, which is the way you, you deal with um, these music files in the Web Audio API. Uh, and then if we go back here. Yep, so we have our buffer here. We make a buffer source, which is a node that uses a buffer to generate sound instead of generates it with a function and a wave. And then we set the buffer. We set it to the... We connect it to the destination, and then we start it, which starts playing the buffer. Um, you can make it loop. You can seek to different places within the buffer. So you have a lot of control over how you, you play the sound. Um, this is helpful for building stuff like this. This is the ASCII drum machine, Beats.js. We can throw some hi-hats in there. Yep, you start to dance, it's okay. You don't need to stay in your seat. Uh, all right, we'll stop. So this is Beats.js. It's a little drum machine that just takes a string, turns it into a scheduled track that, that loops. Um, I'll show how to use it. So you load a bunch of buffers. You, um, Beats.js just looks at what these things are. Can you see this, by the way? This seems too small. And that does not. <laughs> The mess we're in. <laughs> These are H's. <laughs> Anyways, this is kind of the key, which instrument this, this line is going to play. So this is HH, SN for snare, BD for bass drum. Um, over here, we map these strings to buffers. So the Beats library just knows whenever it sees this string, play this buffer, and it schedules them in a loop. Uh, here we're giving it our track. So this will just play kicks on the bass drum and loop through that. And then you call start playing. Um, all right, so that's cool. Um, Dubstep has visualizations. There's like guys in giant inflatable suits and I don't know, weird stuff like that. So we need some kind of visualization for uh, our EDM band, our dubstep band. And we're going to use something called flocking. So does anyone know what flocking is already? A few people. Um, flocking is this very simple set of rules that controls the behavior of a group of particles and makes it look like they're kind of this intelligent swarm. So it was meant to mimic flocks of birds or fish or bats. I guess they used it in a Batman movie, which is cool because this is the closest I get to being Batman. Um, <laughs> the way it works is it creates these particles. It gives them random velocity vectors. And then each tick through, it iterates through the particles and looks at all of the neighbors of each particle. Um, and, and the three things it tries to, to manage are the cohesion, which is um, how close it wants to be to its neighbors, the, uh, oh, geez, 
Gotta look at my notes. Now you guys are gonna know the secrets that I hide. Uh... There they are. <laughs> okay, the cohesion uh, means that they try and stick together. The alignment means they try and go in the same direction as their neighbors, and the separation means they try and um, not clump too far or too close together, because then they'll hit each other and uh, the pixelated birds will die. Um, so these three simple rules um, just make this complex simulation that looks a lot like some kind of life. It's kind of like Conway's game of life, right? You have these simple rules, they work together to make something cool. Um, so this is just it running with no input or changes or whatever. Um, one thing we can do is change some of the parameters of the flock in response to the beat. So we're going to start playing a beat from Beats.js. And I think it's on like the third note or something like that. I don't know. Every so often, you see when they all split apart? That's because we're changing the cohesion um, to make it so they don't like being close together. And then we change it back so they clump back up. So this is how we're going to make our, our visualization. And then it will stop playing to the beat. Um, so we're almost there. Uh, yeah, this is just an example. So Beats.js, this library has a beat emitter callback. It'll get called every time it loops through a track with the times that the, the beat will fire. Um, and then we just set a timeout to do whatever we want on the beat on that time. Um, we also need to, we should also talk about the, uh, the timer in the web audio API. So if you guys, if you know about um, how set timeout works in the browser, you know it's not reliable. You can schedule something with a set timeout and it won't fire the exact millisecond that you scheduled the timeout for. Um, for audio, you really need a reliable clock. Otherwise, you get clicks and gaps and it, it sounds terrible. It's really easy to perceive. It's not as easy to notice if you're kind of just moving divs around on the page. But if you're generating audio, your ears are really good at detecting discontinu uh, discontinuities in sound. So the Web Audio API has its own clock. Um, it uses seconds instead of milliseconds because who needs consistency on the web? Um, and when you make an audio context, it just starts ticking. You can always grab the current time and then you can use, um, you can use that time to schedule different nodes to start playing or stop playing or change their parameters at certain times. And it's, it's in a different thread in the browser. So it won't get messed up by page rendering or, or anything like that. Okay. Um, we're getting close. Um, one thing that's been missing is wob. So wob is in dubstep when it goes wob, 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 wob. And that's a key ingredient of dubstep. You can't have dubstep without wob. So we have to talk about the secret of wob. So we talked a little bit about how sound waves work. Um, this is building on that knowledge. So here's our carrier signal. This is the signal that's playing the note that we're listening to. Um, we use another wave called the modulator, and we feed that into the carrier signal to generate this modulated signal. So um, you see how it kind of combines the waves. What, what do you think this will sound like down here? So if this is playing a, a single tone, just constant, same volume, everything like that, what do you think this one will do? It will, yeah, it'll get louder and softer. This is the amplitude, right? So when the amplitude gets higher here, that's louder. When it gets lower here, it'll, it'll get softer. Um, and that, that's, that's wob. That's how you make the wob, um, which sounds like I'm mispronouncing that's how you make the web, but that's not <laughs> what I'm saying. So we'll show an example of that. Oh, wow, got some distortion. Um, that's the wob. This is the code that does it. So this is the same as before. We make a context, make an oscillator. Then we make a gain node. Gain is what you say instead of volume if you do music for elitism. I don't know. Uh, no, it has real reasons. But it's, it controls the volume. Um, and then we create a gain oscillator. Um, so the oscillator is the thing generating the node, or the note. Uh, the gain node controls the volume. So we pipe the oscillator through the gain node. And then we hook up our gain oscillator 
to the gain of the gain node. So it's making a sine wave like this. When the wave goes up, the gain on the gain node gets higher, which makes the signal louder. When the wave goes down, the gain on the gain node gets lower, which makes the signal quieter. Um, so we have two oscillators running at the same time, but only one of them is generating a sound. The other one is controlling the amplitude of the first one. Does that kind of make sense? OK, cool. We're getting close. Um, you are also in our band, but the button is not there. So you have to see behind the curtain again. Do, do, do. See, gulp is reliable. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, this uses React as well for maximum buzzword density. So, uh, oh, I'm going to swap out the, the mic really quick. I have to tell the sound guy so I don't blow your ears out. Okay. Um, what do the lyrics of dubstep songs sound like? <laughs> They're always nonsense, right? It's like, the clouds are so high, higher than the sky, which doesn't make sense. Um, we're making JavaScript dubstep, so we need some JavaScript-related nonsense. What about undefined is not a function? That's some nonsense, right? OK, so to participate in the band, um, we all have to record an audio track together. That's what we're going to do right now. Are we all agreed? Undefined is not a function. Is that going to be the, the vocal track? Okay, I have my iPhone microphone, high fidelity, pretty good at picking up sound. I'm going to hit this record button, and then we're all going to yell, Undefined is not a function, and record it, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Undefined is not a function. Okay, now I gotta, I'm going to plug back in the sound here. Okay, we're good. Uh, we can check the quality. Maybe. Two, three. Undefined is not... Okay, we got the countdown. <laughs> Undefined is not a function. Oh, jeez. So, no joke, the hardest part of this presentation was, I'm, I'm bad at the DOM. It was figuring out where in, the, in this div I'm clicking so I can draw this drag thing on it. That took me so long. Undefined is not a function. Okay, there's our track. Good cut, good recording, guys. We should, round of applause, good job. All right, we'll save that for later, um, which is right now. So, <laughs> oh, it's barely on there. Okay, this is the, uh, where we're going to put everything we use together. So we know how to make drum tracks, we know how to generate sound, we know how to sync everything to the beat, we know how to um, record sound and manipulate it. Um, it is missing. The visualization. All right, it's going to get smaller. That's okay. You can still see that. So here's um, my beautiful UI for the, the drum machine slash, I don't know, music performance thing that I've, that I've created. We'll start the, uh, the verse kicking off. That's too loud. Okay. Kick off the bass track. It's got, it's got the wah. Uh, it needs a melody. 
kick off. The melody. All right, and then it needs some little dealy dealies on the end, so we'll throw in an arpeggio there. Kick in any second now. Yep, there it is. It's beautiful. And then, uh, let's see if I can do this fast enough. Oh no, what happened to my drum track? There it is. Okay, every dubstep song needs like the breakdown, right, where it gets quiet and then it gets louder, and that's where you take all your ecstasy to get ready for the drop. <laughs> and then it gets a little faster, a little faster. Oh no. Oh no, okay, there it is. All right, obviously some coordination problems in our song. A couple days, we'll fix it in post-production. A couple days in the studio, we'll make it okay. Um, we have made dubstep. We'll throw in a... There we go. And then we have our visualization all at the same time. We just need some people up on stage with those swirly glowing light sticks dancing. And then we will have completed our, our uh, browser dance party. Okay, that's the browser dance party. Give yourselves a round of applause for your participation. Great work. So I, I know I glossed over some aspects of this at the end. These slides are all be up on GitHub. You can look at my code and then discard everything I said after you look at my code. Um, <laughs> Are there any questions? Yes? So you mentioned that the uh, audio API has its own primer. Mm -hmm. uh, have you attempted to use that primer for non-audio purposes? I haven't, no. Do you think you could? Um, to bypass the unreliability of the set up? <laughs> I mean, you'll get the current time? I guess, so, you can use it to get the current time. You can also use it to schedule changes to properties on nodes. But I don't think there's a way to just call an arbitrary function in response to the, the timer. So I don't know how you would hook into that. I don't know. Sorry. It sounds like room for improvement. Maybe you will be the one to do that. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, in the back. It's, well, it's, it's the web, so it's always in beta. I mean, they're still working on the standard. Um, let me show some resources here. Make these bigger. So um, the spec is being worked on. It's broken things in a couple ways already throughout its life cycle. I think they just made a few more backwards incompatible changes. But it's, I don't know, it's in a usable state. It's not perfect yet, but you can definitely build on it. And the browsers it's in are the evergreen browsers. So as long as you update your code when they break the spec, then it'll just work in, in people's browsers. Did that answer your question? OK. I'm sorry, I haven't been repeating the questions in the microphone. Um, the question was, is the audio API in beta or not? Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, I don't have the internet, so I, it'll just do nothing if I click on that. Um, I think it's called signal processing with the web audio. No, that's the talk. It's a free online book. Um, if you just Google O'Reilly web audio API, it's got a pretty thorough introduction. Um, they have some live code examples on the page, which is always cool. Yeah. Where will we find this on it's on my GitHub, which is Jurgison. Uh, I guess I'll, we'll just put it in the video comments or something like that when it gets released. Where, was, where will we find it on GitHub was the question. Yeah, another question. Um, what other designations for the type of 
That's a good question. So the question was, what other destinations are supported besides the speakers? You can always feed the output of, of your graph into what's called a script processing node, which will just give you the raw digital audio. Remember that slide we showed with the digitization of audio? It'll just give you that buffer. Um, you can use that to, I don't know, turn it into a blob, save it as a URL, do whatever you want with that. The Web Audio API also supports, um, so it supports real-time audio, which is when you're generating and playing back audio in real time. Um, you can do it faster than real time as well. So if you want to record, if you're generating a bunch of audio with sine waves and you want to record, I don't know, 30 seconds of it, you can just play it all back in a couple seconds because it's not tied, it doesn't have to be tied to the clock. Any other questions? That was just an NPM module called Boyd's. Have you, do you know if anyone like, looked any other stuff, the D3 or anything like that? They have, yeah. I'll, there's actually, the question was, what, am I, what module am I using for, for the visualization? Um, oh, my markdown broke. Well, there are a few cool things that people have made with this, or with the Web Audio API. Flocking.js is this online playground. Um, it kind of does all the grunt work for you in the background. And then you just have to write a function that, that kind of returns a, a synth. So it's a good place to play with it without having to deal with all the um, boilerplate setup you need. Um, there's a collaborative web audio editor. This is by um, the Deftone. He spoke at JSConf about it. It's basically, it's, it, it looks like a professional audio interface editor thing, like Ableton Live or something. And it's uh, hooked up to the cloud so you can record tracks together with other people at the same time. And someone, oh, that's cloud to butt plus. That's why you guys are laughing. A cloud music editor. There's a browser plugin I have that changes every instance of the cloud to butt. It's, it's never quite bitten me in this way before, though. Oh, man. Anyways, Splice is a commercial company that just released. Uh, this is a thing you can pay for, and they have real, actual musicians using it to create tracks and to allow other people to remix their tracks online. Any other questions? Cloud to butt plus. Look it up. All right. Show me what you make. If you make cool stuff, tweet it to me. I would love to see. love to learn from you guys. Thank you very much.